what's up guys? My name is Stephen White, AKA Rusty BMX. I'm 24 years old. I'm also living in Rosedale, New York. Been riding since I was about 13 years old. And this is my BMX story. All right, it all started from when I was about 13, 12, 13 years old, riding with um, some, fr some friends from my block. We went riding into Long Island. I didn't have a BMX bike at the time either. I had a mountain bike, some crap mountain bike. So I'm riding down the block into Valley Stream, Long Island. And I don't know, you know, I'm over here doing wheelies, doing bunny hops on a big mountain bike. And then out of nowhere, my friend Marcy comes out his backyard because I guess he see me. He see me trying to do like tricks on a mountain bike, like trying to bunny hop and do 180s on a mountain bike. So he's like, yo, come here, come here. Like he called me over and I'm like, yo, what's good? Like my name's, he's like, what's your name? I was like, my name's Steven. He was like, yo, I seen you doing tricks on that mountain bike and stuff like that. He's like, you don't got a real bike, like a BMX bike? I was like, nah. He was like, yo, come here, I'll give you a bike. And you could build it up and stuff like that. So I was like, no, all right, I'll do that. So he came back there. He showed me some Harrow, heavy Harrow frame. I didn't know, I didn't know BMX back then either. This is like back in like 2009, 2010, like back then. Like, so I'm over here like this heavy bike. I'm like, all right, whatever, I accept it. You know, took the bike, put it together, sealed bearings and um ball bearings, had a Harrow stem shadow hollow bolts animal piff bars just had a lot like th old school throwback style like big sprocket of course like 35 or 45 two sprocket and you know i was just going in with that like i i, I even had a harrow wheel like that too like and some harrow um front wheel too harrow complete basically to keep it a buck like I did everything like to start before I even touched BMX and started doing bunny hops on mountain bikes and on BMX bikes itself. I, was, I started out with skateboarding, started out with um, rollerblading, scootering. And I was just like, yo, I, I feel like this isn't it for me. I want something more challenging. And then out of nowhere, like I said, he seen me on that day and he was like, yo, come here. Like, yo, I seen you doing the bunny hops and stuff like that on the mountain bike and trying to do 180s and stuff like that. He's like, yo, you want a bike? Like, we do BMX and stuff over here. So I was like, yeah, like, you know, come through and get with y'all. So yeah, that's how it started. Back then, like riding with them, like I was looking up to them because I didn't know BMX. Like I'll come home, like typing BMX on my um, what's it called, desktop computer, and um, search up BMX. I'll see people like Nigel, Garrett Reynolds, Dennis Anderson, Mike Spinner, the Nike, the Nike 6.0 videos, and um, just a lot. Like I'll see Tyrone Animal videos itself too. Edwin De La Rosa killing it. Everybody, Mike Holder, just influences. I was like, yo, like I want to take BMX serious. Just like how these guys out here killing it, eating it and busting to get these clips and doing what they do to look good on a bike. I want to do the same thing. So that's how I got into it. I started looking into how to bunny hop, how to's on how to bunny hop, how to's on how to 180, how to's on how to 360. And I took it step by step as progressing to get up there. Started with bunny hops, um, 180s for um, second, then moved on to 360s. I was always three tappings, so I got 360s down pat. Cause you gotta remember back then it was um, ride B, you, got, you had hella platforms. You had ride BMX, you had um, vital BMX, like even dub BMX had a website. YouTube itself had majority of the videos too. Yo, even to the point, I'll keep it a buck like this. Even to the point guys, when I was in school, I was in school watching some of these videos, like when um, certain classes where they let us use the computers or like 
I'll go to a certain class that involved you using a computer, like the library or certain classes that had them. I'll be sneaking on the websites, like those websites, like Vital BMX, Ride BMX, YouTube, and stuff like that, to the point where they blocked out some of them. They blocked out Ride BMX, they blocked out Vital. I was like, yo, damn, YouTube, of course. And I was just like, damn, I guess I gotta wait till I go home to watch the majority of these videos now and stuff like that. The first trick that got me excited to keep it a buck was a feeble, because I remember trying to learn how to feeble. I'm just like, how the f do I do feebles? Like, I see everybody doing feebles and shit like that. Double pegs was obviously easy. Anybody could learn double peg off rip. But feebles and then smith grinds were getting to me. I was just like, yo, how do I do it? Like, how do I get over? How, how do I do hop over smith instead of like a regular smith? Like, those were the tricks that were getting to me when I first started. I'm like, how do I do these grinds without always busting or getting hung up? The easiest trick that I always wanted to learn, like I said, I had a harrow complete, but like the headset was all f***ed up and stuff like that, rattling, I had no chain, majority of the time I was always kicking around with no chain, riding around in the city, in some spot, um, spots and spots with these guys and stuff. So I remember one time I looked up on YouTube, I was like, how to bar spin and stuff like that. And mind you, I had no grips on my bike either. I had f***ed up grips to the point where I was like, no, f*** this. I took them off and just rode with no grips. Went outside, threw a, um, did a couple bunny hops, you know, it took a little while for me. I was like, no, I don't feel comfortable doing it in the street. I don't feel comfortable doing it on the sidewalk. I even tried it in the grass, took forever. To the point where I was like, you know what? Let me just huck the Like, let me just throw it, see where it goes. I threw it, caught it, um, caught it by one hand. And I was like, yo. So I tried it again, threw it again. My drive, like I said, I have no grips. I have animal piff bars, like, Animal piff bars, and those bars are small. If anybody had, has an animal, um, pair of animal piff bars, you know how small those bars are. So I threw a bar spin, caught it, and I was like, yo, because I looped out, so I looped out. So when I did it again, after, the, after like another couple of hundred tries of bunny hops and stuff like that, once I got comfortable and threw the next bar spin, I actually landed it. And I was like, yo, I felt accomplished. I felt like I was untouchable. I felt like I was just you know, that's how majority of people feel like once you learn something, you be like, yo, I'm this now, like, I got this trick down pack. I can do this anytime now, like. So, you know, I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it to the point where I stopped doing them because, you know, I kept busting my ass at a point and I was like, yo, I'm tired of getting hurt, cuts and bruises. So I stopped doing them and, and it was at a point where I lost bar spins. I would do a bar spin, I couldn't land them anymore. So I had to build up that encouragement like back in like when did i start doing bar spins again like back in like 2000 2011 because you gotta remember like when it comes down to certain tricks like bar spins or tailors whatever tricks you're trying to learn you're not gonna always go out there every day bust especially if you're getting cuts and bruises like you're gonna be like yo i don't feel like throwing this trick no more i'll leave it alone like i'll try something else or move on to something else and then you Later on down the line, you come back and do it. You like, no, let me try this trick again and see if I can land a bar spin. And that's how it ended up going. Like a few weeks down the line, I ended up doing it again. And I ended up landing bar spins. I was like, yo, just kept doing them. Like after I landed, I just kept doing them, kept doing them, kept doing them back to back to the point where I got it down pat. And that's how you learn tricks. The same thing with tail whips too. Like I learned tail whips on an A-frame. I didn't think I would ever get tail whips. Yeah. Like, tails was another thing that was impossible for me. I'll say the scariest thing I've ever done was back then when I was riding too, was three and down certain stair sets too. Like, cause I was young too at the age too. So I was like just sending it with a f***ed up bike to the point like, if you know, if you have a headset and you're jumping down certain steps, you can jump down the steps, you might know, just, your bars might just snap and everything might just go flying. But I was still out there. I was hitting rails, 10 to 11 stair, 12 stair rails, just three and big stair sets too. Like. Yeah, I can show you. I got plenty of 
cuts and bruises. Look, even from the jam, <laughs> even from the stimmy jam, just like, just got multiple cuts and bruises, like from years too. Like, um, I broke in my leg before, but I was not riding. This is when I wasn't riding at all. Like, I wasn't even riding at the time. Didn't wasn't doing BMX or nothing. I was probably skating around, but like, I wasn't taking skateboarding or scootering or anything serious. I broke, I snapped my leg on a jungle gym, like one of those fucking things you climb on that has multiple holes and stuff like that. So I remember climbing on that. And like, I'm with my mom, my little brother too. I had a park in Valley Stream, Long Island, Central Park. And what's it called? I'm walking on top of this thing. Like I'm climbing too. Like I'm like, I think like 11 years old, 11, 12 years old, climbing on this thing. My leg slipped and I got hung up. I, I was upside down too. And I just hit, remember hearing my leg go like, I remember crying too, like yelling in pain. Like, ah! like sounding like a fucking Dragon Ball Z character going in Super Saiyan, but yeah. Like, I remember just screaming in pain, crying. Like I couldn't walk either. Like, so my mom was screaming for help because it was only us in the park at a certain time too. Like it was early in the day, like it was an afternoon, like around 4.30, 5 o'clock. And some, she had to have some guy that was jogging around the park carry me to a car and then they took me to the hospital and ran the x-rays, found out my legs snapped. Yeah, that was not with BMX. I was just like at a random, at a park, climbing on a jungle gym or whatever and being stupid and slipped. My leg got caught up and snapped. Back then, like I said, I was young. I was just reckless. I was, I could have been, I could have had my leg broken. Like once I had a certain amount of days to heal up and stuff like that, I was just back on the bike. Like I wasn't doing crazy tricks like bar spins, but like I was just like, Riding around, I'll do a few 180s, few bunny hops, a few 360s, and little grinds here and there, and that would be it. BMX means a lot because, for instance, it helps me get all the way through life problems. Like, I'm having a lot of life problems right now, even in the future, I'm having a lot of life problems between family, work, and just life in general. I always take my bike um, places as far as to just try and get away. Like, I always use my bike as a stress reliever to like pedal away from my problems. Wherever I'm mad, just like pissed off, not having a good day, or don't feel like hearing anybody's bullshit. I just try and ride my bike. Or if it's raining outside, obviously, I know me, I like to smoke up and smoke some good herb. I'm not always drinking Hennessy. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't drink like that. I only drink on occasions. Growing up watching X Games and stuff like that on TV influenced me to try these things like skateboarding, scootering, and rollerblading and stuff like that, and making me realize like, yo, certain certain things, certain of those things weren't for me. To the point where my best friend now, my best friend Marcy, was the one that came out of his own backyard. He's like, yo, I see you doing stuff on a mountain bike. Yo, build up a bike and come ride with us. Come hang out with us. Come learn tricks just took BMX to another platform. That was basically like, yo, him trying to get me out of, you know, doing other stuff. Like I could have been playing basketball, doing baseball, gang and banging, like robbing people. I could have been a person working in a certified building right now in Times Square if I wasn't riding bikes or if I wasn't into skateboarding, BMX or any of those other things. That's the thing, like, I still don't know to this day. Like I always said it, like if I took school serious and all that stuff, probably, I went to high school for law enforcement and public safety. Like if I took um, law enforcement serious, I probably would have been a cop or a lawyer or something or something like that. If I had the education rights and, you know, I chose the, the fun side. I chose the BMX side. I'll say this, I'm both, I'm a competitive rider and an aggressive rider. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm out here to do me at the end of the day because like, I, I grew up doing me regardless, like being funny, being like somehow like a comedian, always making people laugh and riding bikes. So I'm not out there to follow into anybody else's footsteps. Like I'm out here to do me. Like if I get picked up by a sponsor or something, it's just off of me doing me. Like I'm not out here trying to bite off nobody, trying to fall into nobody's footsteps. I'm out here trying to find my own path, my own right path to go down. I prefer to ride with my friends. 
Like, that's what I prefer to ride with. A group, like, if I know the group and stuff like that, then, yeah, I'll be down to ride with them. But it's, like, a certain amount of people. Like, with me, I'm a street person. Like, I grew up in the streets. Like, yeah, I'll go to a few skate parks and stuff like that, ride a few skate parks. But with me, I was just, like, more of a street rider. I chose street as, like, my um, way of riding. Everybody has their own way, like, you could grow up riding trails, racing um, bikes and stuff like that, or being a park rat, um, dirt rider, or sh riding street. And I chose my thing was to ride street because that's what I—that's what me and my friends grew up doing. We always rode to certain spots in the cities or Queens, Brooklyn, the Bronx, wherever. So I was like, the streets is where it's more at. Like I'd rather do more tricks in the streets and get hurt in the streets and prove myself that. I'm more of a street rider than being at a park all day doing the same thing or doing different tricks and stuff like that. I remember bringing that energy to the street. But don't get me wrong, certain tricks I still want to learn in a park to learn them and get them down packed. But other than that, I'd rather take those tricks that I'm learning at the park and bring them to the street where it'll be worth something. The thing with me and um, Robbie is, I'll say I'm somewhat on cult or not. Like, I, I have yet to ask the guy. Like, me and Robbie Morales are cool people. I love the guy to death. He gave me my bike. He gave me this whole bike completely for, for free, like, no charge. He was like, yo, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep progressing. Keep making Pansy's videos lit. And, you know, you got my trust. You got my, my heart. So basically, I don't know if that's his words or his terms of saying, yes, I'm on cult, like the flow team of cult, or I don't know. But hopefully in the future, going down the line, I hopefully I do get on the team. I make the team. I mean, I expect to get more sponsors, too, but like serious sponsors. Like, I'm not trying to just be riding for bikes. I'm trying to be riding for other companies, too, like Ethic or... For instance, like drink companies, Red Bull, whatever, Gatorade, however, like however I could get it. I do consider myself a professional rider because I bust my ass a lot to not be a professional rider. It's that simple. Like if I'm out here busting my asses, I showed I just showed you my leg. Like these are battle scars, like battle scars. It goes all the way up, like battle scars. At that point, even if I'm sponsored or not, I am a professional BMX rider. You don't have to be sponsored. That's a lot of thing with people to this day. You think just because you think like people are on teams and stuff like that. I get it. You want to be on a team. You want to get free parts and stuff like that. Even though you work for it, it doesn't work like that. Just because you're, um, you know, you're nasty on a bike. Just take it as you're a professional rider yourself. You don't need these teams and stuff like that to sit there and be like, oh, I'm on a team now to be even more of a professional rider. If you believe in yourself and you really make, um, fall into place, you know what you're doing and you love riding BMX, you'll find it in your heart that you're a professional BMX rider yourself. You don't need nobody. You don't need no team to sit there and tell you, oh, professional BMX rider for this team or whatever. Just do you. And someone will pick you up down the line. That's what I'm still hoping for. I'm hoping someone picks me up down the line. Places I have traveled with my BMX, so far I've been to, um, I've been on a cross country trip with the guys, Panza, Stefan, and all the guys. And that was my first time going to the West Coast in, in total. Like I've never been on the West Coast, so shouts out to Panza for that. Cause honestly, if that wasn't for him, like going on that cross country trip, I'd probably never get to see the West Coast. And so I honestly saved up some bread to go out there. Even from, from Nashville, Tennessee, to um, Texas, Arizona, to then California and stuff like that. Even seeing like the borderline of Mexico and stuff like that. 
it was just like first time experience is just like wow like for anybody if you've never been on the um west coast like experiencing that stuff like even like driving seeing the mountains and the snow on the mountains and stuff like that or in the desert where you see like nothing like it was just a great experience but yeah i've been to um miami with my bike that's about it outside the country with my bike no Yes, I would like that to happen because I got people in Nigeria and all over saying, when you come in to places like Mexico, Nigeria, or, you know, Jamaica, all these other places like that, Puerto Rico to come ride. My thing is, since everybody keeps saying that it's lit and I never got to go and experience myself Simple Session, I really want to go out there to Simple Session and go experience that for myself. Because I'm hearing it's always the place to be, but I never got to experience it. So definitely simple session. The other things I'm into as far as like extreme stuff, snowboarding, skateboarding. I mean, I'll do a few. I'll do a few skateboard tricks here and there, but I don't own a skateboard. Like if I'm at the skate park, my local skate park with people that I know skateboard, I'll pick up the board a few times, do like a few kick flips, ollie shoves and heel flips, and that'll be it. Like. Snowboarding, yeah, I know how to snowboard, but you no, know, I'm still learning. Like I can um, get down the slope and all that without falling now. But other than that, like doing tricks on a snowboard, no. Son, <laughs> nice with it. <laughs> Life behind my friend Marcy was like, Yo, what's your name? I was like, The same day he gave me the bike, too. He was like, Yo, what's your name? I was like, My name's Steven. He's like, Steven. He was like, yo, nah, we're going to call you Rusty for now on because my bike was rusty too. Like I said, I had I had hand-me-downs. Like back then we called those parts hand-me-downs because we had a box full of parts, like everything. So I used those hand-me-down parts and then he was like, yo, your bike, we gonna, as your bike name, we're going to call you Rusty. And I was just like, all right, I guess like if you want, because you know, like I was the rookie in the group. Like there was like eight of us max. And then we had people in Long Island too, like eight to nine of us max, probably 10, if it was all of us riding that one day. So yeah, it stuck on me to the point where when I started um, riding, when we started coming here a lot and I met Stephon, Stephon, I met Stephon here at this very playground right here, him riding around and stuff like that on his little kink um, complete back then, some blue kink, kink complete he had. He was just in here learning the same thing. Like I was learning back in the day, feebles, double pegs and shit like that. And to the point where we came, we, was, we met up and we was like, yo, what's your name? He was like, oh, my name's Stefan. Like, I just um started riding and stuff like that and trying to learn. So he was like, yo, why don't you just start riding with us now and stuff like that, you know? Because we're out here riding too. Like, that was just the scene out here. Everybody, you know, we had, a, we had a skateboard scene out here too that died out. And then everybody just went to bikes. I met um, Panza through Stefan and Billy, though, like through Bill Stefan and Billy Perry. Other than that, if I didn't meet um, Panza through Stefan and Billy, I probably wouldn't know who Panza is to this day, unless through YouTube. That's exactly what it was. Stefan probably put the good word in. He was like, yo, if you want someone for your videos and you know, make your videos more lit, funny, and do stupid shit, like, here's someone right here. Like, I guess that person was me. And it always stuck, like, me and Panza, like, but buddies compared to like everything you want else, like as far as like just riding wise, we could joke, we could freaking do pranks on each other. We'll get mad at each other, but we'll still know want to just like walk it off and be like, all right, we'll, I'll get you back later. That's just us in general. That's me, Panza, Stefan, Raymond, everybody in our group that rides now. Like. Current tricks I'm learning right now. Um, Honestly, a lot. Like between yesterday at um, New Jersey with Panzer and these guys, I was trying to learn decades again. Like 
I mean, I never had them. I never had them before, but I was just like, I did them one time at my local and I was actually getting around the bike to, close enough to the pedals. It's just that when you're doing decades, you're coming around so quick that it's hard for you to sit there and look at your pedals and figure out where to place your feet in time. So I was just doing them yesterday, trying to see if I could get around and land one, but it didn't turn out to happen like that. So that's one trick I'm learning. Another trick I like to learn is tuck no handers, but that's another trick I did one time in the past and I was just like, never again, got hung up and I was over the bars like this. I was like, never again, I'm good on tuck no handers. So um, I would love to try it again, but it's just like, you know, that take getting that confidence because like to sit there and do a tuck no hand and then like I'm getting, I'm literally stuck like this. I'm like, how do I freaking, get back and put the get the bars like in my hands and that's what happened i just got hung over i'll tell you this since i always think rusty is a um gta character honestly i'll keep it a buck like this i'm honestly the most sweetest and loving person y'all ever meet just don't cross me um yeah you know i walk around people even say i had friends my closest friends like friends that i call family they was like yo from when we was kids, why did you always used to walk around like you was mad at the world? I'll be like, yo, honestly, bro, I don't know. Probably just because I had issues. And if, even if I wasn't mad at anything, it would be majority because of sun like in my eyes or something. So I like make like certain faces to make it look like I'm just trying to get the sun out my eye. But people would be like, yo, why do you look like you're mad or like just pissed off at the world? Like, I'm not mad, like, just chilling. I'll tell y'all this, don't ever give up on BMX because this is the same very park that we're in right now. Back then when I was riding too, when I had a crappy bike, I remember kick pushing all the way from my um, other park, but, but this is before we even had a skate park. The skate park was thought of, that was just like a, um, it was like, it was like a cricket field, like people go there and play cricket or baseball or whatever. And I see another BMX rider pedaling his ass off and I'm like, who the fuck is that? But he's like literally flying. So, you know, I'm over here kicking behind him because I had no chain on too. So I'm kicking, I'm kicking, I'm kicking, trying to catch up to this dude. So we get in here now, he, he, he gets here now and I'm riding in too. I'm like, yo, like, what's good? Turns out it was this guy, Nigel. He was like, yo, where's your chain? Like that, he's like, I see you killing it and stuff like that, but where's your chain? I remember Nigel taking me back to his mom's house one time. This is like, it was just me and Nigel. I wasn't with nobody from, the, from my group that rides out here. It was just me and Nigel here. So he takes takes me back to his mom's crib and stuff like that. And he um, goes in the garage, comes back out and gives me a Primo complete wheel through that one instantly. He was like, um, here's a chain. You just got to get a chain breaker and put it on. I was like, yo, thank you. Cause no one's ever done this for me before. Like ever since then, I always stuck with BMX. Cause like I said, even with Panzer, when he took me cross country, it was my first time on the West coast. And I got to see Chad Curley, Devin Smiley, all these professional BMX riders that I've never seen before, or just in videos on YouTube or Ride BMX or Vital BMX. Like, so when I sat there and seen people like Chad Curley and Devin Smiley ride for the first time, it was like, it was like watching X Games in reality for me. Like, yo, I'm dead ass at these Cali skate parks sitting there watching when I should be riding. I'm over here watching, I'm like, yo, like doing double bar spins, tail whips and 540s and stuff like it's nothing and i'm looking like if i was to sit here and try and do a 540 or a double bar spin or a, a tail up off or something right now it's gonna take me like probably 10 15 tries before i land it so watching them is just like yo it was just like a crazy experience so ever since nigel gave me that back wheel and stuff like that that primo complete wheel i always took bmx completely serious i was like yo i want to i want to get to that certain level in bmx where i could give people the same exact push that Nigel gave me, the same exact push that Chad and Panza and Stefan are giving me and stuff like that. As far as me, Rosedale, I would always live in Rosedale. Like, I have no other choice. Why would I leave Rosedale? Like, I, I'm cool with everybody out here. Like, I have no problems to sit here and be like, oh, I need to up and leave Rosedale for no reason. Like, this is my hometown. I grew up here. I was born and raised. Like. Moving forward, like, I'm trying to, um, for instance, like, I have yet to ever, 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 ever drop a um, BMX edit, and I'm working on that. We're going to start working on that to the point where I can do, like, work on my first edit is going to be um, Rusty's 
NYC home edit or something like that. I don't know what what to call it yet, but that's just something like Rusty's home NYC edit or something like that. I'll tell y'all this too. That day I went on that Miami trip. This is why I always say it's good to like, you gotta experience, you gotta go and leave your area. You can't always stay around in the same surroundings, like going to the city and stuff like that. Yeah, it's good to go out there and stuff like that, but at the same time, it's good to go and experience other places. So when I went on this Miami trip, this professional baseball player that plays for um, Atlanta Hawks, uh, I forgot whatever, what team it is, but he's a professional baseball player. He pulled me to the side, I'm like, cause I don't know this guy from a hole in the wall. I just went to the bar, ordered a drink and he pulled up. So we're talking and talking and talking. I'm like, I'm a professional BMX rider and stuff like that. And this guy had girls all over him. That's another thing I'll tell you, I, like I said, I keep it a hundred. This guy had girls all over him from when he walked in there. So I'm like, yo, and he's talking to me. Like, I don't know what made him come up to the bar and talk to me. So he was like, oh, where are you into that bike ride and stuff, yo? And blah, 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 you know, gave me that. He's like, yo, I, I'm, I'm inspired that, like. So we're talking and talking. He's like, yo, I'm a um, professional baseball player for Atlanta um, Hawks. I forgot the name of the team or something like that. This is what he was telling me. He was like, as a young black brother, you see how it's going on out here in in America and world in general, he's like, yo, if you want to keep making money, he's like, leave all that stuff in the street, gangbanging and cursing and fighting and all types of stuff, drug dealing and stuff like that. He's like, leave that all in the streets, bro. He's like, at the same time, he's like, at your platform, someone's going to see you eventually and want to pick you up. But if he's like, if they see, ever see that stuff, he's like, they're going, they're not even going to waste their time. They're just going to move on. So he was like, yo, as a young black brother, as wisdom, giving, giving wisdom to me, he was like, yo, do what you got to do, but do it smart. I always tell people I got to finish putting in, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears I got to throw into this bike that I'm sitting on right here. Like I haven't finished doing, I haven't dropped not one blood, sweat, or tear into this bike yet. Yeah, I ride around, do tricks and stuff like that. But like I'm saying, like I want to drop my first edit, my first NYC edit, my first Rusty BMX NYC edit. And when I drop that, I want it to be fire. I want people to be like, yo, this is his first video. He went in and put it on, like he put on for his hood and all that. So when I sit there and say these things, like I really want to go and I want to progress. Like I want people to see what I'm working on, but it's hard. Like, cause I haven't been progressing. Like how, how I'm saying it to you, like I haven't, but I'm getting there, like learning new tricks and stuff like that. Going to get back on my YouTube videos and stuff. Once my um, mentor gets here, going to get back on that and carry on. My inspiration at this point in life is just me because I tell everybody, this new generation that we're living in, people don't want to work for nobody. This whole generation that we're living in, everybody wants to work for themselves. Everybody wants to be their own boss at something. So my inspiration to you is just be yourself. Try and do what you want to do to come out and make it in life. You know, whether it's being a doctor, some YouTuber, whatever you want to do, put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, put your heart into it. So that way people see you, people will notice you. That's my inspiration to you. My inspiration is me. I'm not following nobody. I'm not trying to be like nobody. I'm just trying to be Rusty and hope Rusty makes it, makes it, you know, makes it to a higher platform where I can get my foot in the door and be with celebrities, Wiz Khalifa, Nigel Sylvester, and, Pharrell Williams, you know, Jay-Z, DJ Khaled, all these other people like on higher platforms is just all about getting your foot in that main door. And that's what I'm hoping I could get. Like, that's what I'm really hoping I could get later on down in life.